So there's a realm, a place in God where decrees come from. These decrees determine people's seasons, the seasons over nations, the seasons for kings, the rise and fall of kings. These decrees determine how long men live and when they'll be cut off. That's a place where true power resides. And the activities of heaven that are occasioned by these decrees are ongoing, they are continuous, they are perpetual. It means if you hit heaven now, you will find breaking news. That's what I'm saying. And these breaking news are decrees that God has made that will shape the realm. It's supposed to shape the heavens and shape the earth. It is what determines who becomes the next prince in the arena of grace. Who becomes the miracle worker like Reinhard Bonkin to, to take the gospel from place to place. That is where it will come from. And the move of God keeps breaking out. It keeps breaking out. It keeps breaking out. So there is breaking news in heaven every day. If you come into that realm, are you there? Announcements are going on. Announcements are going on. Ordinations, impartations, scepters are being given out. Decrees in heaven. I say, ah, because of the activities of intercession in Botswana, for instance, and the intensity of intercession, they are making demands on heaven. Right there in the throne room, God has decreed and he has appointed a, a warden that will be in custody of a certain scepter, wielding kingdom authority and extending the frontiers of the kingdom of God. Anytime you enter there, there's breaking news. And you see, the thing about God is this. God does not use words the way we do. For instance, if God were to come and say, You are a tall man who, if God says that, you will become tall. Tall to the extent to which he thinks tall is. Oh, you are not with me. <laughs> the first time words were used in the Bible, it was not for communication. It was for creation. God resides in, in a realm where he sustains an energy level that makes him such that when he speaks what he says will become true for he is not a man that he should lie when you hear the bible says god is not a man that he should lie it doesn't mean because god is modest is righteous so he cannot lie no it means god dwells in an energy center such that when he speaks anything he says becomes true now, because of that kind of power, he doesn't use words anyhow, the way you do. Oh, you are still not with me. Okay, okay, because you are not with me, I will protest. <laughs> are you with me? He doesn't use words anyhow, because he knows that the moment he speaks, it will happen. So there's a realm, a place in God where decrees come from. These decrees determine people's seasons, the seasons over nations, the seasons for kings, the rise and fall of kings. These decrees determine how long men live and when they'll be cut off. That's a place where true power resides. And the activities of heaven that are occasioned by these decrees are ongoing, they are continuous, they are perpetual. It means if you hit heaven now, you will find breaking news. That's what I'm saying. And these breaking news are decrees that God has made that will shape the realm. 
is supposed to shape the heavens and shape the earth. It is what determines who becomes the next prince in the arena of grace. Who becomes the miracle worker like Reinhard Bonkin to, to take the gospel from place to place. That is where it will come from. So in the layer of God, there is consistent activity that God wants you to become a partaker of. Are you there? In Revelation chapter 1, ah, verse 5 to 8, and then we end the theoretical part on that note. Tomorrow, we will continue from there. Hallelujah. Ah, I say hallelujah. hallelujah. Okay. In Revelation chapter 5, 1 verse 5, it reads, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead? No, 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 no. Am I giving you the right scripture? Okay, let me check. Um, oh, sorry. Revelation chapter 4 verse 5. Revelation chapter 4 verse 5. So, a realm is a place where there is sustained and continuous spiritual activity such that the moment you stumble into that space, you begin to experience breaking news and the result that proceeds from the decrees of God. Are you there? It's a place where power resides. It's a place where authority resides. And the doctors may say that you are barren and you cannot have any child, but when you appear before that throne where decrees result, he says to you, you shall be a matriarch of nations. And it doesn't matter the gynecologist that saw you, maybe it's from Oxford, and he's the best among the physicians that are there, and the nation respects his opinion as far as fertility is concerned. It, all those things matter less if you have secured a decree from that throne because that's where power sits. That's where power sits. You will be afraid of men until the day you come before that throne that plays host to power. For dying is the kingdom. For dying is the power. For dying is the glory. There are several things that no teacher can teach you. You will need to experience it in the journeys of prayer. I was born in Stamara. And my stammering was so bad that I was next to dumb. If you could, if, you, if, if, if there were calibrations from ability to speak to dumbness, I was on the last line, the very last line before utter dumbness. Do you understand what I'm talking about here? The calibration was terrible. It was that realm. I was wandering in that realm. And somehow, I stumbled on something that gave me my vocal power back. Please help me tell your neighbor you've been visiting the wrong places. Now, we are going to take on a journey. And we are going to explore the realms of God. <laughs> I, uh... I was still with my speech impediment when Jesus encountered me at the age of 13 in the company of four angels. I was before them for eight hours when he told me that he had called me to be a preacher. And I said, no, you made a mistake. That there are people in my family that have vocal power. They can preach for you. I'm not desiring. Can't you see me? Can't you see me? Hallelujah. If you wanted a preacher, you would, you would have given him the ability to speak. You allowed me to show up here. I don't know the circumstances that manipulated my possibility and brought me here in this state, but you cannot say that you have ordained that I'll be a preacher because that's a contradiction. 
I never knew that he wanted me to experience his power. Do you still remember the, the guy that was born blind? And Jesus made, spat on the ground and made something from mud and put on his eyes? When he was asked, because I believe their disciples were undergoing training. So now they wanted to give Jesus a question that would be difficult for him to answer. See, this man now, we got information that he was born blind. And according to your last lecture, you told us that sin can be the reason why Satan has authority in a certain space. Now, this man was born blind. Who sinned that he was born blind? Is it is the sin his own sin or the sin of his parents? <laughs> oh, I like, I like those disciples. And Jesus told them that this case, he reaches back into hallowed antiquity and he tells them the reality from the studio that it is, this case is not occasioned by any form of sin. But this case was deliberately allowed like this so that the glory of God can be made manifest. What Jesus means by that is this. When Matt came in the studio in eternity, he gave him eyes. When James came in the studio, he gave him eyes in the studio. When Dina came, he gave her eyes. When that man came, Jesus said, no, go. He, he, he decided not to give him eyes. The reason why he decided not to give him eyes was because he knew that this man will be manifested on earth when he will be born and he will start his ministry on earth. He came into time to give him his own eyes. <laughs> that the glory of God, there are some conditions in your life. He left it from the studio. I know you, have, you, have, you, you check the gynecologist in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Because you believe the one here it's not up to date with the recent innovations that have come out in that field. Until you have become a tourist, you moved around. The only place you have not visited <laughs> are the openings in heaven that you will need the journeys of prayer to visit. Because the moment you come before God, he says, Oh, it is not sin. That is the reason why you are like this. I deliberately decided to allow you come out with this deficiency so that my name will be glorified. Any other expert you hear other than the voice that comes from the throne is a lie. Can we, can we find the real voice tonight? Can we find the real frequency tonight? And that's why he calls all nations to the place of prayer because he's willing to open the gates for spiritual journeys you still remember abraham abraham was called from his country he was called from his kindred he was called from his father's house and he was called to navigate through spiritual pathways in search of his inheritance when god called him god did not show him the address of where he was going there was no sat nav that he could use to navigate to the place that god was sending him he said, when you begin the journey, then I'll begin to show you. You will go to the land that I will. What? Oh, you are not with me. The place he was going was a physical location, but the means by which he will go there was through spiritual senses. So when he sleeps, a portion of the map will be smuggled into his dreams. He will wake up and say, oh. He'll be able to travel for two days with the directions on, on that map. Do you know that if you are navigating that way, you cannot afford to quarrel with God because he will leave you in the wilderness? <laughs> Maya, Maya, Korea. Many of you have been left in the wilderness because you did not know that the, your hope of reaching your destination is in following his, his fault. Time. Can we rise up and look for him? We need to find him. We need to find him. We need to find him. Our generation must find him. Our families must find him. Our continents must find him. Europe must find him. 
and you will be the tool, the instrument that God will use to bring many out of their wanderings into God's realm. We seek your face tonight. Are you determined to find him? Are you determined to travel, to make your journeys in the spirit? Oh, can someone unlock, unlock the volcano that is rising in your spirit? Unlock that volcano that is rising in your spirit. He calls us to become part of his journeys. There are journeys he has cut out for you. There are journeys he has ordained for you. He wants you to travel, to travel in the journeys of the spirit. Just like Abraham, there is a place he's leading you. There is a location he wants you to go, but he's going to lead you and guide you by the power of your spiritual senses. He will call you into the place where the Holy Ghost is, and he will allow you to see your path through the Holy Ghost. Come unto me and I will answer thee, he said, and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. The spirit of prayer will come again upon Europe. England will be consumed. The sons of the Scots will feel his fire ah! his journeys begin again allow that volcano expression tonight <laughs> Ascobe Maconda Sili, Paito Ke Samolande, Abraco Samateli Mandoria, Rato Somokoria Bamalada.